Hello, Physics Nation. My name is Nate Larmond, and I didn't have my microphone on for the last video, so I apologize. You know, that little fail, try again, redesign, do a better job, engineering, you know, improvement loop I was describing. Well, I guess it's the same in video production. Um, <laughs> I didn't have my mic on, so sorry about the messed up audio. I'll still probably post it just so you can um, enjoy my fail. The little puzzle I left you with was to compare how far the marble moves to how far the kangaroo moves. You can see the marble's going really far and the kangaroo's not going that far at all, except at the end of the last video, my, my pulley system sort of flew apart, so I can't really duplicate the measurements I made. Uh, the paint sticks were how far the marble moved, and eh, it still sort of lines up. And this gap down here is how far the kangaroo moved. So check it out. That's the kangaroo distance. Oh, huh, look at that. Bam, three times the kangaroo distance is the marble distance. All right, and it's not an accident because there are three pulleys up here. There are three support strings. So why does that happen? Well, I don't want to get into all that yet. I just want to say in simple machines, you can never get something for nothing. It appears as though, oh, move the kangaroo a little bit and you get a big output distance, but you actually have to apply three times the force to the kangaroo that you get out here at the marble. So the kangaroo is actually pretty heavy compared to the marble. Um, the theme is energy is conserved. Force times distance is called work. So a big force applied through a small distance in the kangaroo becomes a small force applied through a big distance at the marble. It all depends what you want the machine to do. Sometimes you want the machine to multiply distance and then the kangaroo would be the input and the marble would be the output. But usually you want the machine to multiply force. It all depends on what you want the machine to do. So the marble would be the input and the kangaroo would be the output. So I don't know how much the marble weighs. I don't know the kangaroo's mass. So we're actually going to try to apply mass standards to this system. Um, coins are sort of our quarantine mass standards. I have two quarters here. I forget what they were. Five and two thirds grams or something like that. So this is like 11 and a third grams. Uh, where's my other one? Here are six quarters. <clears throat> So whatever, 34 grams. Uh, let's see if I can take these masses off and not totally destroy my system. <laughs> Pulley systems work great when they are under load, but they work terrible when they lose tension. So just try to keep the tension applied to your pulley system. And this is where literally everything fell apart last time when I took the kangaroo off. So let's try to not do that this time. All right. I did not destroy my apparatus. So now we have what the textbook says should provide equilibrium. We have a heavy mass over here on the load side and one third of that mass over here. So it should be in, uh, what well, it should be in equilibrium. It obviously is not in equilibrium. So we got to figure out what's different about our physical system compared to the textbook system. Well, let me try to move the camera. I apologize. What's different is we got all sorts of extra mass right here, like this pulley, masking tape, paper clip apparatus is actually helping the uh, six quarters lift the two quarters. So that's why the system is not in equilibrium. All right, so I'm running out of time. We're going to have to put some extra weight on this side in order to achieve equilibrium. Um, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.